Imagine waking up to find your freedom limited, movement restricted, and your supplies at risk. Leaders declared martial law in some areas following the deadliest day of protests. During martial law, this could very easily become your reality. While no one wants to face this, being prepared is crucial. Today, we will discuss nine places to find shelter or hide during an event like this. Imagine a cozy cabin tucked away deep in the woods, miles from the nearest town, and far from any major roads. These hidden havens are more than just a getaway from the daily grind, they're perfect when you need to stay off the radar. When things go wrong and the prying eyes of authority are everywhere, these off-grid hideouts offer more than peace and quiet. They're designed to be out of reach of patrols and away from areas authorities might search during martial law. Ideally, your cabin is located on land with natural features that make access difficult, such as dense forests, rugged mountains, or even swamps. Often, these cabins come with their own resources. Things like wells for clean water, solar panels for generating electricity, and maybe even gardens to grow your own food. This independence from city services makes them ideal for staying hidden for extended periods. You won't have to rely on public utilities that could be disrupted or controlled by the authorities. Here's the key. Location, preparation, and self-sufficiency. Choosing a spot that's naturally hard to get to keeps unwanted visitors away giving you an extra layer of security. So if you're thinking about being prepared for anything, consider setting up a place that's both hidden and self-sufficient. It's your best bet for staying safe and sound. When things get tough, there's nothing quite like the comfort of supportive people you trust. If you find yourself needing to stay low during martial law, who better to rely on than your own family or your closest friends? They know you, they have your back, and together you can combine resources to stay safe. Here's the thing. I speak from experience. Back in 2001, when tensions were high in Pakistan, the country I was living in at the time, I remember this gnawing feeling of uncertainty. Every news report felt like a countdown, and the thought of being separated from my family during a potential lockdown terrified me. That's when I started having these hushed conversations with my wife and my closest friends, the ones I knew I could count on. We talked for hours, strategizing, planning escape routes, and most importantly, making sure everyone was on the same page about the risks involved. See, the truth is, bringing loved ones into your plans isn't without its challenges. If you're on the authorities' radar, anyone associated with you might also attract unwanted attention. Imagine soldiers searching your house and finding a hidden walkie-talkie you plan to use to communicate with your brother, who lives a few towns over. Suddenly, your brother's a suspect too. All of you. It's a heavy responsibility to consider. So if you choose to go down this route, remember communication is key. Have an open mind and honest discussion with your loved ones. Explain the situation, the potential dangers, and make sure everyone involved understands what they're signing up for. Are they prepared for the stress of constant vigilance? Can they handle the possibility of increased scrutiny from authorities? This isn't a decision to take lightly, but if you can navigate the risks and create a solid plan together, Having a trusted network of friends and family around you can be a powerful source of strength and resilience during a difficult time. All right, folks, let's talk about the ultimate escape, vanishing into the wild. Dense forests, remote mountain ranges, hidden valleys. These vast stretches of nature offer a unique advantage, distance. If you're serious about getting away from it all, there's no place quite like the wilderness to evade unwanted attention from military patrols. But here's the thing. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This isn't a weekend camping trip. Think Survivor on hardcore mode. Disappearing into the wilderness during martial law requires real survival skills. This isn't a decision to take lightly. Let me tell you a story. My uncle, a former Green Beret, always told me, nature is a beautiful teacher, but a harsh critic. He wasn't wrong. There's a certain romanticism associated with the wilderness, but surviving in it requires a whole different skill set. This is a serious undertaking. Being a wilderness survivalist isn't for everyone. It takes dedication, training, and a good dose of self-reliance. But for those with the tools and the knowledge, going off the grid in the wilderness can be the ultimate escape from the chaos of martial law. So, if this is the route you choose, lace up your boots, pack your survival gear, and get ready to truly disconnect from the outside world. Remember, knowledge is your greatest weapon. Research survival skills, invest in quality gear, and most importantly, understand your own limitations. The wilderness can be a beautiful sanctuary, but it can also be unforgiving. 
Be prepared. Imagine a place where everyone shares your commitment to preparedness. That's the idea behind Prepper Communities, groups of people who prioritize self-reliance and resilience, often living together in areas designed for both privacy and security. In a situation like martial law, where you might feel alone against a big problem, being part of a Prepper Community can offer significant advantages. Here's the beauty of it. Everyone's looking out for each other. You'll be sharing resources, knowledge, and skills that can help the entire group stay hidden and safe. It's the power of teamwork. These communities, whether fortified rural compounds or discrete neighborhoods of like-minded individuals, are designed to handle threats collectively. This reduces the risk of any single member being targeted by authorities. Plus, there's a huge benefit to having prepared people around you. It brings peace of mind. These aren't just neighbors, they're allies, each with their own valuable skill set. You might have someone with medical expertise, someone with knowledge of self-defense or tactical skills, and others who are experts in gardening, mechanics, or communication. This pool of skills can be invaluable in a crisis situation. Now, I'll be honest, joining a prepper community isn't like joining a book club. It's a serious commitment. Back in 2008, when I was first considering prepping, I spent months researching different communities. It was important to find a group whose values aligned with mine, a place that fostered cooperation and respect, not competition. All right, buckle up for this one, because it might surprise you. We're talking about hiding in plain sight. Yes, during martial law, one of the most daring moves you could make might be to disappear right under everyone else's noses, right in the heart of a bustling city. I know, I know, it sounds crazy. Cities are like glowing surveillance hubs with cameras on every corner, checkpoints popping up overnight, and constant activity. But here's the thing. There's a strange kind of security in that very chaos. Think of it like a school of fish. Each fish blends in with the mass, becoming less noticeable as part of the bigger movement. In a city, you become just another face in the crowd, a single grain of sand on a crowded beach. Anonymity is your armor in this urban jungle. Cities are like labyrinths. They're a maze of diverse neighborhoods, towering buildings, and bustling streets. Whether you're slipping unnoticed into a crowded cafe, melting into the flow of people in a busy park, or simply disappearing into the throngs on a random street corner, the chaos of city life can be your ultimate camouflage. But listen, this strategy isn't just for the faint of heart. You'll need to be a master of navigating the concrete jungle. Everywhere you turn, you might encounter security measures, frequent ID checks, security cameras that seem to follow your every move, and random searches that could become a part of your daily routine. To truly blend in, you'll need to become a chameleon, adapting to the city's rhythm and understanding its hidden pathways. The city's infrastructure can even become your ally. Think about it. Subways become anonymous tubes of transport. Underground tunnels might offer temporary escapes and even abandoned buildings could be secret havens if you know where to look. So, if you can handle the constant pressure of staying vigilant, possess the street smarts to keep a low profile, and have the adaptability to navigate the ever-changing urban environment, a big city might just be your perfect hiding spot during martial law. Remember, staying invisible in plain sight requires constant awareness, a bit of cunning, and the ability to think on your feet. It's a risky strategy, but for the right person, it can be a surprisingly effective one. Now let's shift gears and talk about escaping to the countryside. Picture this, fresh air, wide open spaces, and a slower pace of life. Small towns and rural areas often get overlooked during times of crisis like martial law. Here's the thing, these places might not hold much strategic value for the authorities. Making them attractive hideouts, plus with a limited military presence, there's less chance of running into constant surveillance and tight control. I remember years ago when I was first getting into prepping, I spent a summer volunteering on a farm in a tiny town out west. It was a real eye-opener. People there relied on themselves, homegrown food, local bartering systems, and a real sense of community spirit. This self-sufficiency can be a lifesaver in a situation where supply chains are disrupted or heavily monitored. Imagine grocery stores running low on supplies, in a rural town, you might still have access to fresh produce from a neighbor's garden or eggs from your own backyard chickens. There's another benefit to going rural, a tight-knit community. People know each other, look out for each other, and there's a natural sense of security that comes with being part of a close-knit group. 
But blending in isn't just about avoiding checkpoints. It's about becoming part of the fabric of the town. Learn the local customs, lend a helping hand when you can, and contribute to community events. The more you integrate yourself, the less likely you are to be seen as an outsider. Rural life might not be for everyone, but for those seeking a strong sense of community, self-reliance and natural ability to stay under the radar, a small town or rural area could be the perfect hiding spot. Remember, it's all about finding the option that best suits your skills, personality, and long-term goals. Now here's a key point to remember. Martial law isn't usually a nationwide situation. It's often localized to specific areas facing the most trouble. So if you find yourself living in a hot zone with tightened restrictions, one of the most straightforward strategies might be to simply pack up and move to a region that's still operating under normal laws. This move can offer a dramatic change. Imagine going from a situation where every move is monitored and restricted to one where you can enjoy relative freedom. Relocating to an unaffected area means less stress, less tension, and the ability to live your life without constant vigilance. It's not just about escaping the immediate inconveniences and dangers. You're also finding a place where life continues as usual, where businesses are open, schools are functioning, and essential services like grocery stores and hospitals are operating normally. Choosing this option means staying a step ahead. You're maintaining your mobility and freedom in a time of uncertainty. Remember, staying informed, having a plan, and being prepared to move quickly will be key to successfully navigating this strategy. All right, so this is a big one. Finding refuge across the border. We're talking about leaving the country altogether. Now, I'm not saying this is the easiest option, but for some of you looking for a real escape from the grip of martial law, crossing the border to a neighboring country with a more relaxed political climate could be a bold strategy. Imagine a place where you can breathe a little easier, a place free from the constant pressure and surveillance back home. Think of it as a chance to hit the pause button, a safe haven to regroup, strategize your next move, and figure out what comes next. But listen, this isn't a decision to take lightly. Before you grab your passport and head for the airport, let's go over some important things to consider. First, not all countries are created equal, especially during times of political unrest. The last thing you want is to land in a place that's not exactly welcoming. Do your research. Understand the political relationship between your home country and the one you're considering as a refuge. Knowing the diplomatic climate will help you determine your chances of being granted entry and how safe you'll feel in your chosen haven. Look for countries with a history of accepting refugees or those that maintain a neutral stance in any conflicts your home country might be involved in. Similarly, prepare for culture shock ahead. Remember, crossing the border means encountering a whole new world. This isn't just about different scenery, it's about different ways of life, customs, and maybe even a completely different language. Learning some basic phrases in the local language will make communication easier and help you blend in faster. Think of it as a crash course in cultural fluency. Researching local customs and traditions is also key. You don't want to accidentally offend anyone by not understanding proper greetings, etiquette, or religious practices. Familiarizing yourself with these nuances will go a long way in making your stay more comfortable and avoiding any cultural missteps. Also, make sure to plan a return trip. While escaping to another country might offer some temporary relief, it's important to remember that you might eventually want to go back home. Will that be possible? Consider creating a plan for your eventual return, if that's your goal. Staying informed about the situation in your home country is crucial for making informed decisions about your return. Look for reliable news sources from back home, as well as international news outlets that provide unbiased reporting. Finally, don't ignore the legalities. Ensure you have all your paperworks. That means visas, travel permits, the whole shebang. Understanding the legal implications of your stay is crucial. The last thing you want is to encounter unexpected complications because you overstayed your welcome or didn't have the proper visa. Crossing the border is a bold strategy, but for some it might be the best option for escaping the grip of martial law. Remember, research is key. Understand the political climate, prepare for cultural differences, plan for your potential return, and make sure you have all the legal documentation in order. With careful planning and a bit of courage, escaping across the border could be your ticket to a temporary safe haven. Buckle up for this one, because it might surprise you. 
We're talking about staying right where you are, your own home. Now hear me out. During martial law, sometimes the most effective strategy can be hiding in plain sight. Think about it. Your home can be transformed into a discreet haven, offering a surprising level of security. The secret sauce here is a little bit of cunning. We're not talking about turning your house into a fortress with flashing lights and guard dogs. The key is to make your place appear as ordinary and unprepared as possible. You want to blend in seamlessly, avoiding any unwanted attention from patrols or inspections. Imagine your home as a master of disguise. Keep a few basic supplies visible, like some bottled water or canned goods on the shelves. But tuck away the bulk of your prepped resources out of sight. The goal is to project an image of someone who isn't expecting trouble, someone uninteresting to anyone who might come knocking. It's all about creating an illusion of normalcy, with a well-stocked sanctuary hidden just beneath the surface. The real advantage of staying put is that you know your surroundings like nobody's business. The layout of your house, the neighborhood trees, even potential escape routes if needed. This familiarity gives you a sense of control and allows you to navigate the situation with more confidence. Similarly, you're the boss of your own security measures. Without raising any eyebrows, you can install stronger locks, reinforce windows, or even consider blackout curtains for added privacy. There's no landlord or homeowner association to answer to. You can customize your security to your needs. And let's face it, leaving everything behind and venturing into unknown territory can be stressful and risky. This approach eliminates the uncertainties and potential dangers associated with traveling during a crisis. You're staying put, staying safe. Speaking of staying put, you'd need to start prepping to make sure your home is the best place to be when disaster strikes. Click the video on screen now, which will help you do just that, as we discuss the 17 items you can't be without in a disaster.